Now I'm recording. Now you're on. Now it's it's real now. Red lights on. Oh no. Now what? <laughs> performance performance uh, uh, issues. Um, so uh, we are both in Las Vegas. I can tell by the fucking scorching heat coming through your window that we're both in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't see the steam off my back right now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Are the windows treated in these newer houses? Oh no, they're magnified. Uh, for, <laughs> it will for actually. It will actually start a fire. It will <laughs> actually start a fire. Well, okay. So, um, yeah. So, it's funny because I've been starting these with kind of how we met. You know, with guys like, well, I met you doing this, and with you, it's been like uh, nine years almost now. It has to be because uh, yeah, almost nine really, years because I. I met you, it would have been 2012. Like it was, on, it was on Grinder. It was on Grinder. Yeah. Yeah. And before we go into this, I just wanna ask you, uh, what did you mean by saying uh that the Beatles are the worst band you've ever <laughs> <laughs> Yes and <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh uh, improv. Hey, look at me us. And, me and Frank have been studying improv, and by studying it, I mean just vaguely aware of it. The yes and game. <laughs> Before we started, which you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stones are the worst band you've ever heard. <laughs> well, yeah, I, yes, and I don't yeah. like the Rolling Stones either. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to be like, hey, great interview, but what What did you mean? Yeah, you he, those guys don't, yeah, exactly. That'd be all the heat we no. need. Well, I got to apologize because for the last nine years, I've been calling you Fred, so there's that. Yeah, okay, <laughs> you know what? It happens. Cool. And I just saw it now on your, on your, on your Zoom. It says Frank Sidoris. I'm like, oh. Frank Sidoris. For a second, uh, I thought I'd called the wrong person, which I, makes uh, sense because your father's bad. your father's name is Frank Senior. So now that all makes sense. I see. I see. Yes, because for you know, I can understand him kind of sidestepping going with an F name, but yeah, just like uh, Fred. <laughs> Fred, you, Fred Junior. Talk. Fred Junior is not named after anybody. He just happens to be named Fred. <laughs> Fred Junior. And, and Junior, which is that to be a good middle name. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Fred Sidoris Junior. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no i think uh yeah we we had met i think it was in this starbucks parking lot do you remember that i, I came by blue diamond, I, blue diamond in vegas boulevard i remember that technically windmill they call it down once right. it's past the las vegas boulevard i remember I mean, you uh i was meeting brent and then um because i had already known brent uh yeah just, i'd only hung out with him just like a you're 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 part of the brent fitz uh uh you know get a gig uh, thing just like me just like a lot of people you know yeah. brent sort of hooks people up so you he found you just at a at a at a sushi joint or something you're like 22 23 years old at the time like, yeah 21 22 and uh i love wow. it for people that don't know the backstory it just sounds like you know i was there playing guitar at a sushi joint <laughs> <laughs> just shredding like hey this yeah. guy's great yeah hey man here's my number sounds great, sounds great. <laughs> Hey, no but requests. no, you, no requests. I, yeah. I I'm sorry. But you literally were just like hanging out with friends, and Fitz happened with with um, like friends of that you guys both knew, and then just sort of yeah. like this is Frank, and Frank's a yeah, and the the way it pertained to you guys was that I was with um, a friend of mine who uh, I grew up with in town, who opened for you guys on your first Slash tour. Right. Right. I right. mean, like the very yeah. 2010. Would that yeah. be? Yeah. Chris from Taking Dog. Chris Babbitt. Yeah. So yeah. I was with him. And we go down to our, just a sushi place we've gone to for years. And then uh, Chris knew Brent and he saw Brent and his wife, Chrissy. And he's just like, how you guys been? Uh, blah, blah, blah. We all walked in at the same time. And he's like, That's hey, you sit with us. And so we sat down and I already knew who Brent was because, you know, like I was an Alice Cooper fan. So it was That's right. Yeah, yeah. So you already kind of had a. He a... played with Alice or, uh, you know, and I knew that he actually played with Slash because I mean, I'm from yeah. Vegas and you guys are Vegas guys. And then yeah. I heard about it. So um yeah that we just hung out and the whole conversation ended up being like you know it was like this is frank this is uh john this is chris and then as it went on it was like so anyway brent and i just the whole conversation that's sure, all yeah like yeah yeah coffee and and music stuff and so he was like dude we got to hang out again and then we hung out like weekly or however often as we could and uh i was just you know i had never toured before at that point like i was playing in bands and i was uh Oh, you hadn't done that cab run yet? No, not yet. That's the oh, funny okay. thing. Is that, so yeah. I didn't play with them yet, but I was supposed to do 
um, I was all lined up to play shows in Vegas, uh, in, in a Vegas production, you know, the Elvis Cirque show. I was going to play guitar. Oh, I think I remember you telling that. Yeah. 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 So I was supposed to play guitar in that. And then, you what know, was that show called? It was, uh, I think it was called Viva Elvis. Right. Yeah. It was a Cirque du Soleil Elvis show at Mandalay Bay, was it? It was at City Center, actually. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Aria. You're right. Aria. Yeah. Damn. That's crazy. Cause yeah. So I was supposed to do that. And, uh, and it's funny because that that gig, I was so excited because I'd been working a bunch of random jobs, but it was like the first time, like, dude, I'm going to play guitar for a yeah. living. It's going to be a really steady gig and it'll have insurance. And then uh, fast forward to me running into this guy who's a lead singer for the band, The Cab, right? Yes. And he's like, we need a guitar player. Uh, he, who, who are you playing for? And I was like, well, I'm supposed to play for Cirque. And he's like, well, let's talk. Send me a video. I'm, and, I'm playing for Elvis Presley. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wait, we met before. Meet guitar. Meet <laughs> yeah. Meet. <laughs> Play Elvis Presley. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slowly back out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he ends up uh, offering me that gig, and I just remember talking to a couple people that you know, or kind of Vegas mainstay people and mm -hmm. uh, that have been in Vegas playing shows forever. And I, just, I was like, hey, what do you think? Should I take this steady thing or go on tour? And he's like, you know what, dude, I've been doing this for years and it's a trap in Vegas that you could fall into. And he's like, and trust me, you need to leave. Like you have to go on tour. And well, right now <laughs> I, just, I, I, I could see it. that advice you know at your age I could see that advice being you can always come back to Vegas and okay. land a local gig or whatever and and stay you know because it's good to go out and you got to go like where did you all go with those guys you went to like it was crazy yeah I went everywhere like uh, I just didn't go to Europe like that uh for the most part I remember the first tour was uh I went to Canada first right for Avril Lavigne that's right so that was cool we played arenas you know one That's of our nuts. it was like our second tour and i was just like this is cool and uh then the next oh yeah middle of that tour we ended up kind of like touring with like a bunch of canadian bands funny so avril then simple plan right right yeah and yeah i ended up in houston and we flew from houston to tokyo so it was my first time like really leaving right so it was crazy flying houston to tokyo because i remember looking at the globe like the <laughs> on the plane and you go straight up through the states and then right over canada alaska straight right to Tokyo. so crazy so then uh did that did australia singapore and the philippines with that band that's mental it was was, that, it was, was it a was a sound wave tour the festival tour in australia, australia was sound wave yeah that's crazy and new zealand with them so now was miles on that tour was was alterbridge down there or something like that or Oh my gosh. Yeah. Now you're okay. I totally forgot about that. So I play with this band for like, you know, nine months or something like that. Let's say, or like a, it was close to a year. I remember. And then, uh, I was just telling Brent, like my experience, you know, like we were just, right. and he's like, well, Hey, um, and it's funny because I'd always hear about what was going on in your band for the most part. And it was always cool. And then he's just like, yeah, I don't think we really like, you know, what's going on with, uh, our guitar player, I don't really know. I was like, okay, well, I don't, I don't know, whatever. Right. I had yeah. no, I had no, uh, you know, the last thing I wanted to sound like was like, I mean, man, you should probably, probably get yeah. rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, guy. Probably get rid of him. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't say anything. I was just kind of like, oh, cool. And then fast forward to, uh, you were actually in the car. So I'm in LA. We were shopping for uh, another label. We did like a weird, they're the, always the most annoying thing in the world doing a, a label showcase thing it's just so, yes i hate that more than anything yeah it's the worst yeah it's just a bunch of people that you know have it feels like they don't have a soul and they're just kind of like okay uh <laughs> yeah play a song for us and you're just sitting yeah. there like okay and then trying to trying to play like you're playing to a crowd it just sucked but anyway the worst we were doing that in california in la you guys were in la uh Work, starting the album or something like that apocalyptic love so 2012. right 2012 yeah and he said um hey let's uh, let's grab dinner so then that's when i got to fully like actually hang with you i remember i had met you in that parking lot but we this is our first time actually like sitting down we ate where was that at a big boy remember oh big boy that's right in yeah. burbank in burbank big boy yeah burbank. yeah in big boy burbank, burbank. triple b yeah <laughs> triple b <laughs> yeah so we go there and um 
we're just catching up and I don't know, getting to know each other, I guess. And then uh, on the way back, because Brent picked me up from the hotel. Right. He said, uh, yeah, so we're going to be auditioning guitar players. And, um, and I wanted, I was, you know, considering asking you to come down and audition. And I was like, holy shit, like, of course, are you kidding me? But internally, I'm. You mean important. I get to play with Todd Kearns? Of course. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you said, what? <laughs> Yes, and. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean I get to work with Pete Marluzzi? You mean what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Legend. So anyway, I'm like, okay, cool. And internally, I'm like, I mean, that's just uh, absolutely. Are you kidding me? It'd be fucking great. I'd love right. to try. And regardless, whatever. And, and you know, at the time, it was it was all just personal reference. People were like, hey, I'm yeah. guy, right? It always is, though. I mean, we, we've we've learned in this business that so much of it is word of mouth and who you know and of all and every other cliche I can come up with, but that's totally and true. You know, I know Slash well enough to know that now the the last thing he's ever going to do is be like, uh, you know, tell Guitar Center get a Guitar Center sponsored Guitar Center. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Slash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, no. It'd just be the, the, a nightmare. But um, you know, uh, I guess fast forward to he's telling me this and I already had to, I had agreed to play Australia and do that. Right. So that's the timeline. So right. in February, um, right. Damn dude. I, I got to look up the exact. It's, it's a long time ago now. Yeah. It's... Seriously. So all I remember was, uh, I'm somewhere in Canada actually. Yeah. Check, check this out. So I'm in Canada, Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. You're in Toronto. I was in Toronto. There you yeah. go. So I think however many days before it was like, Hey dude, can you, um, I think we're gonna try to make this work. And we were going back and forth like, all right, what days can we, are, you know, you are already auditioning people. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, I was just trying to plan it. And the only way I could do it was if I left Toronto at 6am <laughs> Yeah. on Super Bowl Sunday, that's right. Uh, yeah. Fly into LA. And I remember, you know, that's a, you know, five hour and change endeavor, right? Totally. I get to uh, LA instead of Burbank, by the way, because uh, that flight didn't go there. So oh. I had to LAX, drive up, $80 right. cab ride. Oh Burbank, God. Yeah. And, um, audition with you guys. And it just, that's right. you know, there's no, it's funny because there's no like, Hey, these are the songs we're playing. No, I, I never really, I don't know if you knew that. I wasn't really given the, it was like, we're probably going to play. Brent said, I don't know. We, it's been all over the board. I was it like, has. Oh. Yeah. There was no official like, Hey dude, we're playing this, but I ended up, uh, I, I had already gone over just in case, obviously. Right. Like, we went back from Cali. I know that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we did like welcome. No, no, we did a uh, paradise city, which. That's uh, right. Yeah. We did all gun songs. Well, no, that's yeah. Cause back from Cali, you're right. That's right. We, we back from Cali, well, uh, I can't keep wanting to say welcome to the jungle. Sorry. Paradise city. And then we did, uh, that crazy, um, M Shadows one, uh, nothing. Oh to yeah, say. nothing to say. That's right. Wow, from his, from like, the first solo album. Oh, and then we tried to play Starlight, but then uh, I remember my guitar, uh, the other guitar I was using, because I brought a standard tuning and then a half step down. Right. It was just not acclimating because I just changed the strings and it wasn't set up because my tech from the cab was just not a tech. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a tech. Uh, That's got to be nerve wracking. Oh, my guitar's not staying in tune. Great. Yeah. Dude, that was so, that was the only problem. But, you know, we were playing Paradise City, and I just remember thinking, like, I don't care if I get the gig right now because, like, this is just the experience alone is pretty yeah. solid. What's yeah. happening here? Totally. And, yeah. And Slash was so cool. He's like, hey, thanks so much for coming down. I mean, that was so short notice and whatever. And just such a nice guy about it. So then, uh, my buddy Anthony Stasi picks me up. Yeah. I'm mates. Yeah. Uh, and I leave and I'm like, that was just crazy. And we'll see how it goes. And then that night I ended up getting on a red eye. So I think the flight took off at 3 a.m. LA time. I had to meet them in Buffalo. Oh, By the way, yeah. only like day or day off from the tour anyway. So it's the only time wow. it could work. It just happened to work out. I had to play a show that night um, or the next morning, right? Uh, get to Buffalo, New York. I'm out of my mind, and I play the gig. And uh, and Slash called me. I think um, what three days later. It was like I was in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I remember, and um, 
he was just like, Hey, it's uh, he texted me the night before. He's like, Hey, it's slash. I want to call you tomorrow. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and I said, yeah, I'm good. It's not enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. Slash who? Which slash? I know a lot of slashes. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So sure. I, uh, you forget I, that we, we came to see you guys at the, at the Roxy on sunset. Dude, you're right. The, that uh, would have been, so that would have been before all of that. You're right. So I'm glad you said that. So cool. I had already, it wasn't the best context to see you in, except that it was the best context to see you in because you know, the, it's a pop group, or I, I guess, I don't know what you call them. Yeah, they were like, I guess you could say comparable to Maroon 5, how yeah. some of the songs, like at yeah. least there's a guitar in it and it's kind of rocking, but it was definitely pop music, you know. But you but you were you. Like, that's the thing is you're up there with a Firebird or something. I, can't, I remember just being like, well, yeah, he's that guy, sure, yeah. I mean, initially, like when when... Brent would bring you up I'd be like you know talking about guitar players and he'd bring up you know that young guy Frank year old guy and I was like you mean Frank like the young guy and I just kept thinking of us as like these you know older guys who play Absolutely. rock and roll and I thought you know at, at, at first because I had never played with you or anything like that it was just sort of the, trying to do the math in my head of how that all works of how it would have worked for me at 23 years or 22 years old playing with these guys you can say ability too and like i i think that now i'd be like well i mean is that person like can they hang i don't get i mean yeah can they play obviously but are they going to be cool enough to hang well, out with? and that's the thing though is because as you know and you've learned over the years um hanging out in the conspirators world slash is kind of his own persona like he's kind of does his own thing i mean even when we're all i'm talking about like we're in the same room and he's kind of on his phone or doing his thing. And Miles is always living like a monk because he doesn't want to speak or ruin his voice. Yeah. It's a Spock, he's always very, you know. And then there's <laughs> me by myself, a lunatic before you came along, you know what I mean? Just like, <laughs> hey guys, making all kinds of wacky stuff. And like, you know, just kind of like, uh -huh, you know, my, Miles. <laughs> right, Anchorman, Anchorman, <laughs> Anchorman. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like Miles, Miles is always a good time. Like he always likes to laugh. Yeah. But he's, but he's, you know, he's kind of reserved and on his own. It's just how he, how he has to kind of maintain his, his thing for an entire tour. Course, so yeah. it's, until you came along, it was just kind of like, oh, there's finally somebody else. <laughs> like Fitz once said, he goes, he goes, uh, he was just telling some random story. I have nothing to do with us, but I remember him saying something about like, well, we're in the van, we're driving, and uh, you know, Slash is doing his thing, Miles doing his thing. He goes, I don't remember what Todd and Frank were talking about, but they weren't quiet. <laughs> 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 and that's sort of. That's sort of been the M.O. since 2012. Like really. That's what stuck out to Brent. Like, that's what, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't yeah. remember what they're talking about, but it, it was loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was definitely loud. Because that's the, that's the juxtaposition of the, the a whole van of guys driving to the airport, and everybody's just super quiet, and, and we're just kind of like, <laughs> coffee, like, just all well, fire. Thing, I don't think it's never been in any sort of, like, uh, this has never been broadcasted live, but it's hilarious how, I mean, our day to day, like you and I, Brent, Miles, Slash, uh, Chemo, the security guy, yeah, our manager, uh, you know, we'll all meet in the lobby for the most part. Mm -hmm. And if it's not on the bus, it's usually in two vans. And, yeah. you know, there's never been any sort of like line drawn, like, okay, conspiracy no. van, everybody else. But it's funny because it just makes the most sense because. When it's not conspirators fan, like <laughs> if any of us break off into, <laughs> yeah. like you said, Miles Kennedy, the monk before the show. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's conversation, but it's like you know, it's, if, it's, if me and you are a ten, they're a, they're a one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Very chill, and I'm always yeah. like, Did you guys see the? Oh, sorry, Todd's not here. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> well, and then you, the funniest thing is you'll be texting me from the other van, like, Hey, did you see that thing last night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, totally. Yeah, so, and that's that's the funniest thing is it's like because usually before we get in the van it's kind of like yeah totally right okay and then we get on the we just start walking towards a van laughing about whatever we're laughing about we just happen to be in the same vehicle and off we go mm -hmm. and sometimes I think sometimes Slash gets the how come those guys always hang out away from us like they come tell them you know right. like, they don't have to be like he thinks that like like we're like not hanging out with him because he's like the boss no, or something. No, yeah no, no, not, not at all right, yeah nine times out of ten the truth be told I'm I know I can be like really over the top, you know, I'm driving the wife crazy, driving your friends, crazy, driving my kids crazy. Hey, remember that thing? So yeah. sometimes it's good to just be in the one van where it's going to be, you know, tolerated. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's, yeah. that's what it is. But uh, so hold on back to that Roxy thing, because 
I always forget about that, even though it was such a moment. Well, like, it was quintessential. It was a, it was a, a, an important moment because you know you look and you go. It's, it was hard to tell by the by the music because you know it was just like this doesn't relate to what we do at all. But but yeah. that guy's cool. You know that guy's I cool. I was so shocked because just like you said, you said it wasn't the best or you, like not the not best environment, but just not what you'd, I don't know. Like I felt the like context was weird. Context yeah. wise. But yeah. I was kind of like, how could I, it's not, not like I want to ever, the last thing I ever want to do is like put on stage clothes and then get in front of a fucking laptop and be like, Hey, yeah. Slash, yeah. You know, yeah. just want to say, and then start fucking playing guitar. It's like, no, no, but obviously that, that was the best situation because you guys or slash played that velvet revolver charity thing remember that's right island they all got back together for one it was it was years after after they had split they did a, a thing for a friend that passed away mm-hmm. and they played pink floyd song it was the first time scott and the guys had played together in a long time at the house of blues was it it was house of blues la yeah, yeah, yeah. sunset and so i was just down the street at the roxy but like I just remember um, I wasn't supposed to know you guys were coming, uh, but I found out you guys were coming, and I was kind of like, "Oh shit! Like this will be this will be great." But I'm and you're like, like, "Now I got to get on my pink spandex and my flying V." <laughs> so even though in the video I'm wearing you know jeans and a and a, a jean jacket, I was wearing spandex underneath. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just. To, for the vibe, yeah, for the feeling. It gave me, it gave me that confidence I needed it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, but that was crazy because then after, uh, I, I do remember seeing on the reserved booths, like, you know, when you, we did our DVD there years later, which yep. is kind of fun to think of how yeah. it all worked out. Yeah. But like in the, in the same booth where Slash and you guys, it, it said uh, reserved for Slash. Right. And, and you're like, like that's where they'll be. Shit. <laughs> and so yeah. uh, then years later, that was like Gene Simmons and, uh, you know, whoever all came out for that Roxy gig. Yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, we yeah. ended up hanging out after for a second. I remember you, me, and Brent. I don't know if we went. Did you come to the house or where do we? I dude, I don't think I, I don't know. That's the that's where it starts to become a blur. But well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's that, that's awesome, the you know, that was that's all, the weird thing about that whole time is like, and like I say, when I was kind of like, you mean Frank, the young guy, Frank? And I, you know, yeah. in my mind, I just don't think I I I could put it together. Like, how would that work? But then when we played to all, <laughs> I totally well, get it. You know? No, it wasn't. I'm not saying it in a negative way at all. It was just sort of like we had been through these rehear- um, auditions. So we had tons of guitar and a ton of really cool guys, actually. Guys that I thought, I didn't think they were right for us. And that says nothing about um, their... They really are. Yeah, they're yeah, great guys. Nothing yeah. about... A lot of those guys went on to be... Uh, I've seen them in other things, and they're great. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, they just weren't right for this band. And I, and I... So when you came in, it was like... It was like, uh, okay, that's the guy. And literally that night, I think I, I want to think that night was literally like standing there together, going like, "So Frank, 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 okay, cool," and that was it. Brent, so this is what was cool about Brent, um, in a lot of ways, and I like that he he did this because there was zero influence. The only influence he had was, "Hey, do you guys have anybody you want to bring down?" It's like, "Yeah, I got someone. I got someone." That was that was it. And he said that you know there was no him, <clears throat> him trying to say to Slash like you know, Frank's a good guy or like trying to oh, run me no. up the it was like audition speaks for itself. Like you guys, what do you think? And then you all said it. And Brent said like, uh, I mean, correct me. I wasn't there, but correct me if I'm wrong. He said something like, all right, so what do we think? And it was like, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said Frank is the, the best thing that's ever happened to you. Yeah. I guess <laughs> you said that uh, change your life. And now you have yeah. more money in your bank account for some reason. Like, what is that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just for, yeah. by being friends. What happened? I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, yeah, just boom. Yeah. So weird. It's like when just, you wear a Todd Dammit shirt. You should just go to a break right now. You know, yeah. When you're a shirt. yeah. These shirts make your penis bigger. Yeah. Boom. And you get, there's more money in your bank account for some reason. Yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. 100% cotton. Hey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Machine washable. Machine uh, washable. But yeah, no, that, that was such a, and then what was the time frame between what was left of the cat? Like, how did that work? You went back so, and said, yeah. screw you and screw I you. <laughs> <laughs> I came in there eating food. I just dropped it on the floor. <laughs> hey guys, band meeting. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll see you guys yeah. later. Yeah. Uh, no, I ended up trying really hard to, um, cause just remember, Getting the Slash gig is no um, walk in the park. Hey, dude, 
you got the gig and uh you know you get there's a million work. songs to learn yeah. Yeah. night okay. train and a couple songs no it's there's so much music that in the context of my gig with the cab i was like you know there's not a lot of time to sit there and rehearse uh, because we were all living in the same spot oh it wasn't right like right it was it wasn't you know and it didn't stop me from learning the songs but i definitely felt like there was moments where i was like fuck dude i don't even want to do this last tour because this is kind of gonna affect my much more i mean in my eyes obviously it was the next step it was a very important priority <laughs> like yeah i have to fucking get these songs down sure so i ended up asking the manager i was like hey dude can i go home uh or no what was it i think no i didn't i finished the last tour i was like is there any way you can get someone for australia singapore and the philippines oh wow so you hadn't even done that yet that no i had not done i had done oh, tokyo okay. i had done uh all the other shit but i was like i think i was like hey it would have been for Soundwave, I think. Maybe I could do half right. and get someone for Australia. I was trying to figure it out because I remember emailing with Slash, uh, and I, you know, fast forward, I ended up doing that gig. I had to. I right. was uh, in Singapore, and he's emailing me the acoustic guitar center sessions. Uh, That's session. right. Remember? Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, that was your first appearance with us. Was playing in the back room at the Hollywood Guitar Center. Yep. Uh, we did a whole acoustic set. They did a run of acoustic right. things back there for a while. Yeah, that was super fun. That's the one and only acoustic thing we ever did. Yeah, I mean, Miles and, Sl Miles and Slash have done a few. I did one with those two guys once in a while. But um, yeah, but that was the first time we, we ever did an entire, uh, right. the whole band, yeah. yeah. That's funny. I couldn't think of anything, but you're right. There's all the XM sessions and spots. Yeah, they would sit down. You're yeah, right. So Slash is like playing like the guitar solo for Sweet Child of Mine on an acoustic guitar. He yeah. doesn't adjust it at all. He just plays the solo on the acoustic. I'm like, how does he... He's gonna break it's his finger. To watch like the string, yeah. the guitar. Like yeah, he's like this wound G string. It was like yeah, it's a wound like this. It's just yeah, yeah. It's, it's a wound G string, and he's bending it like 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 normal. It's like it's and impressive. Get it out of it. I remember. Yeah, you watch those videos, and there's no there's no adjustment for acoustic setting. Oh, he 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 yeah. just he does what he does, and he's gonna do it on that guitar as well but you know what so now that we're like this far into how we kind of got together i i really want to go back because one of the things that i really think is interesting is i think you were amongst one of the first people i met who was born and raised in las vegas now i i know actually through you i seem to know a ton of people born and raised in las vegas because what it was for me was sort of a magnet for guys like me who were just like kind of randomly ended up here and like tons of other people I knew, it was all sort of transplants. You know, we all came here because there was gigs or we came that's here because there was town. stuff to do. And yeah, yeah. that's what it is. It's a trans transient town. And just, I, I wish I had uh, just like a smash cut uh, montage of every time, every city you and I have been in a uh, meet and greet situation and I meet someone or just, you know, not even meet and greet. Hey, where are you from? Vegas. Yeah. Well, where were you born? Vegas. What? And just cut over and over and over and over. I know. I know. Because cause it's <laughs> not... I think it, it's, it's, you don't really understand how the stereotype that you think, even before I came here, I came here first time just for like a hang in 2003, which is not that long ago. Yeah, it's a long time ago, but it's not that long ago. And at the time, your experience, I mean, because we hear it all the time. Oh, I couldn't live in Vegas because, uh, you know, I'm like, just because you got wasted on a crazy weekend and made some mistakes, you can't live in this city. It's like, None of well, us are out well, I'm banned from the uh, real buffet. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's why. Oh, uh, my mistake. I'm sorry. Yeah, my mistake, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's always the cliche of it. It's like, always well, you, every time. Yeah, and okay. you're like, you, when, if you live in Orlando, you're not like hanging out at Disneyland every, or Disney World every day. You know, it's like, oh, I, I live in uh, Anaheim. I'm at Disneyland every single day. I can't even, I can't even go there anymore. I'm so bored of it. It's like, well, that's not the way it works. And Las Vegas is... Um, it's such an interesting because you know your father and I were talking once about looking at the Las Vegas map uh, back in the day and then watching it sort of slow like grow and grow and grow and it, yeah. and it's like where your current house is where my current house is and are 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 far enough out from the down the the strip that these would have been desert it would have been desert where I'm sitting right now twenty years ago like this was not a thing and your yeah, house I, your, yeah. your 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 house was a desert two right. weeks ago. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. Uh, you know, the iPhone will always show you that, uh, you know, hey, this was a photo from last year. Check out this photo from last year. It does like sometimes it'll pop up and it was literally this walkway. None of this was here. Wow. This obviously wasn't here. It was just so crazy. Like 
and that's that's recent but what's really messed up is when you look at like the 215's not there like the main no. for people that don't know the main freeway that's pretty much a circle around the whole town yeah uh for the most part and then like parts of the 15 it's just crazy you think vegas boulevard used to be the highway in the town yeah you know, that that's was why it. the sign's yeah. there it's just yeah. incredible how it, just like you said it all just started expanding exact you know east and west north and south just slowly further you know and you're exactly your area is you know, from where I'm standing right here, it's pretty cool the way yeah. that whole entire like quad quadrant just got developed, and it's you know it's just amazing. I, I mean, you know, that's the fast, <laughs> but that's the fascinating thing to me is kind of like there's this idea that, um, or I mean, you're you're actually like even more interesting because there are quite a few people that you know you just assume, well, was he raised by a pit boss and a showgirl? Kinda, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's good. He was. He was. Yeah. So, so that's kind of, it's the most interesting thing is that, you know, you, you do meet a lot of people who, of course, work in the, in the casino industry and have raised families out here because, you know, because you can live affordably, you can make a good living and, and, and all that. So, but you actually were raised by a, a pit boss and showgirl, straight yeah, up. Exactly, exactly yeah. Exactly. Not exactly. only a showgirl, but like one of the, one of the crazy girls from the legendary Riviera, which is no longer there, unfortunately. Right. Um, uh, right. But yeah, so, I mean, your, your mother, um, is is a legend in this town mm -hmm. and you know and your dad's a legend for every other reason we love him to death. yeah and then your stepdad's like you know a huge also a vegas guy oh, he, like, oh is, he, is he born and raised well um i believe he might he was born in long beach but he has such crazy uh history in vegas yeah he, like, you know his he, mom and his stepfather uh were jerry lewis's manager so i know just, that's so crazy sort of, so, so yeah, it's a cool Vegas, LA history, you know, it's a lot of yeah. fun. So when Frank was a kid, he would be at, at, at gatherings and Jerry Lewis would be at family gatherings. It's the, is that, is that, is that a true story? I think yeah, it's a total true story. And I, <laughs> because growing up, I would watch cartoons or, and there was always that cartoon character. Cause like in my, my <laughs> which is entirely a reference to Jerry Lewis. Yeah, they would have like a uh, you know, nice lady with shit like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice lady. Nice, yeah, always. And then uh i never really i just thought like okay that's just some character on this show. wacky character yeah years later i'm like oh so oh wow so that's yeah that's the nutty professor that's this that's this that's this and then he would be there and they're like yeah jl's coming they don't say jerry lewis amazing, amazing. and uh he would show up and um i just remember i hit a certain age where i was looking at him and I, was, I just, it really hit me because, you know, as a fan of things, as a fan of music and movies and pop action, culture, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. When I'd see him, yeah. I was kind of like, oh, that's, that's the guy. And like, I just think about what people would think if they were sitting in my position. And one of my moments, it was Christmas and his friend, uh, someone and him were kind of like walking around a living room. So they'd like, you know, in camera, you could see <laughs> they're walking through here and the guy's kind of showing him around and Jerry's back is to me like this. <laughs> so he's, walking around and i'm just still staring at him and then out of nowhere <laughs> jerry just goes he like turns around and, like, stares at me. <laughs> and, I, and i just remember being like and i, I just, <laughs> and we both started laughing because it's like he knew i was staring at him but he didn't right i don't know where he saw me unless it was something. <laughs> but he just totally like just gave me this i was laughing so hard and so every time i saw him it was, he was just a, an absolute now, how old were you when that happened uh that probably would have been like eighth grade oh okay so yeah grade that's eight for you canadians grade eight exactly <laughs> grade yeah eight. exactly thank you thank you for translating for universal right. audience yeah. but the um i mean that's and that's kind of the, you know that when i say like when you talk about being raised in las vegas it doesn't sound any more vegas than that you know what i mean like i know raised at the riviera they filmed casino martin scorsese's film at the at the riviera yeah. when when my your family and my dad all yeah. those people yeah my babysitter is like I could pick out so many people and you know what's crazy is that uh like stuff I never even knew till way later like even the you know Ace Ace Rothstein's uh talk show in right Casino. De Niro's so, character yeah De Niro's character does the he has a talk show and they're like what the hell are you doing why are you you know bringing attention to yourself there's a band that's playing and then the guy who's playing guitar in the band is uh my stepdad's stepdad <laughs> and, wow. and it's so random but he's that guy is one of the best jazz guitar players in the, in, like in history. And he wow. was just, he was just, uh, I don't even know the backstory, but he wears a powder blue suit and he, you see him for literally like three seconds and it's just wow. kind of like, <laughs> so great. 
that's what's so interesting because you know when when you grow up in the you know little tiny towns in Canada, and then you and you if I heard that story, I'd be like, well, of course he he, he was raised in Las Vegas. I'm sure Jerry Lewis was everywhere. I'm sure yeah. uh, Stephen Eady were hanging out and Don Rickles is just like yeah. I mean it's not sure. quite like that, but it's but it is it is really interesting to see, um, you know, just the the you know being raised in this town and how much change there has been in the, in the time I've been here. In the yeah. time I've been here for the last 14 years, hockey arena, football stadium, you know, all that kind of stuff is changing all Potential the time. Potential baseball diamonds. It's like just like an actual stadium, you know, it's just yeah. insane. Just consider that. But like, you know, that entire, uh, I mean, my whole life, I remember people saying like, even before I understood what culture meant, I just remember people, you know, it always came across like high horsey in a way. Right. Like, Vegas doesn't have any culture and like even kids I grew up with there's no culture here and I just remember getting so offended as a kid that was genuinely on the strip all the time because my family worked there or family came into town and we our job and our favorite thing to do was to take you around and be like go to the you know and this was the decade you know late 80s 90s where Vegas was super family oriented sure yeah we've we've kind of teetered back and forth it's like adult playground then it's bringing the kids and then it's kind of in the middle and now we're that's where we're at now it's that weird like middleman but um i don't know dude take like, the kids to the avn porn convention you yeah. know what I'm <laughs> <Take> <laughs> so what uh you know, to, to jump ahead what huh. when did the guitar come into the picture like when did you pick up the guitar how did that happen or uh jerry lewis taught me how to play guitar <laughs> no way <laughs> what <laughs> that would be the best story ever yeah. Well, great. Hey, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing hey, lady, and A. <laughs> and A major. <laughs> I started playing, well, I skateboarded since I was 12. Well, here, I'll back it up. You can still skateboard. Uh, you were skateboarding the Las Vegas Strip in its uh, emptiness during the quarantine. Yeah, I still, I still love to skate 100%. But, like, baseball was my life as a kid. Because you know, your father's. Because my dad, he, should, he almost played on the Cleveland Indians. It's just yeah. fucking crazy. He's right? amazing, yeah. So baseball, skateboarding at 12, and then 15 years old, uh, I started playing guitar. And I'm 16 now, so it's been working out. Like, I feel like... Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you, you've accomplished quite a lot. You went to Singapore and Australia with the cab and played with us for three albums all in one year. <laughs> I have this wormhole in the back. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. It sounds like a, like a Twilight Zone timeline going on here. Yeah, no, I've, so I've been playing since I was 15, and I just... Uh, that's it funny because Slash picked up the guitar at 15 as well. I, I picked up the guitar at 11 and just sort of like went like, I know all I need to know. I know these four chords. Slash was, I, he was 15 too. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was 15, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. But dude, but you, the second part though is that I didn't write Appetite for Destruction at 22 that's true. or whatever no, the hell. No, yeah, I know. That's that's the big difference for all of us, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so like when you, I mean, what was what were you into musically? Like I, I'm sure we've well, had this conversation. Funny. Right. Your dad, your dad is a massive Alice Cooper fan. I know that. Yeah. So right. that must have had like a, a huge effect, you know. Absolutely. Like my entire family, my sister, Tiffany, my mom, my dad, like my immediate family and my grandma, just music people. Just all, and nobody played, <clears throat> played an instrument. My mom played piano, but like she didn't play it in the house. Like she right, didn't, right. I wasn't, you know, going down that road, but uh we were all musical people, big fans of music. We went to shows yeah. and concerts just all the time. And so I just remember like as the skateboarder hanging out with my buddy, his name is Travis and, and you know, Anthony Stassi. He, you know, yeah. Yeah. They had guitars. Oh, they really? Yeah. Is so that right? Wow. And Travis was a really cool, like, I mean, he was just, uh, he's the coolest guy because he skateboarded and he played guitar and he it was just yeah. like, I really, <laughs> that's it. That's, those are the two major, you know, you know, major yeah. things to have. Yeah. And then my buddy Dylan, I have to credit him 100% because he was the guy, we would skate all the time, and then he had a red Stratocaster, like a cool-ass <laughs> red Strat, and wow. we would always, I'd always watch him play, and I was like, man, I gotta, I really want to play guitar, and um, eventually, my mom, she said her friend mentioned something about guitar lessons, like, if you ever, I don't know how this worked out, because this mm. guy, uh, she ends up sending me to him, he's like a blues guy, and he's a really great guitar player, you know, really well-known around town, now that, you know, once I grew up, and I, I told people, you guys ever heard of Pete, this guy, Pete Thinez? And they're like, oh my God, he's, he taught you. I was like, yeah. I mean, he showed me my first chords and everything. Wow. And then, uh, he what moved were you, did you have like some kind of like kids acoustic at this time or what were you playing? No, he, uh, I got the Squire Strat. The, oh, 
Right. Okay. I remember the Squire Strat. Yeah. 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 And, um, yeah. It was, it was cool, man, because like all I wanted to do was learn every Alice Cooper riff and, and I, uh, I was a big Beatles fan. Like I had the white album and right. uh, rubber soul was the, was next, I think. But the funny thing about all this is, is, is Beatles and, and Alice Cooper, that's no joke. Like that stuff, you kind of have to know what you're doing to get around a lot of that kind of instrument or a lot, a lot of that kind of music, because right. I, you know, when you come from punk rock and you go, I know three chords, let's go make some racket in the garage. You know, it's like, da -na -na -na. but I, I, you know, I was just talking to somebody earlier about the Beatles. You don't, you don't jam the Beatles. You either know those songs or you, or you just don't know them. I literally can't think of one song where we could be like, okay, heads up, Beatles yeah. song. Like, yeah, no, I know. Helter you know Skelter, what? Helter Skelter, and even Helter Skelter has a weird turnaround in that first chorus that always screws everybody birth, up. Right? Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, yeah, right there. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't, like, how are you going <laughs> to just kind of, Keep, no, 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 yeah. stop. I stop the song. Stop it, the song. It, it always, you know, Every it time. always works that way. But that's, but that's, I mean, that's interesting to see that because you did some kind of classical. Did you take some sort yeah. of classical? Then, yeah. So my, my first teacher moved away and then my mom did some research. Uh, so I would have been in like ninth and 10th grade and she found a guy just at this local guitar store. Sure. And I was his very first student. He literally just moved to town and uh, he ended up becoming a best friend of mine, you know, this guy, Jason, and he, he taught me classical. And so at that time I knew my blues scale, right. Just like right. The, your, your typical rock and roll solo scale, mm -hmm. and then all my like E7, uh, A7, A minor, sure. A7, you know, all that. So like I, I walked in, I'm like, this is what I know. And he goes, okay, well, I want to teach you classical guitar. And I was kind of like, I don't know, man, I'm just, I'm, I want to play rock music. Still. Yeah. He was like, he was, and he's a metal guy. So like a big music theory guy. So he's like, just hear me out. Like, I'm not trying to tell you what to play, but just give it a shot. And if we can meet in the middle here. And then, so my uncle was a big rush fan. So right. I'm driving back from San Diego with them on a vacation. And he's like, do you like rush? And I was like, I don't really know rush. And uh, I Did know he like, play the trees or something like that. That kind of turned you onto the classic. He, yeah. he, <laughs> yeah. he, he played hemispheres. Okay. Uh, that whole album. And I was like, just fucking blown away by that whole album. I, I just bet. studied it and I was like, man, I'm a huge Rush fan. So then I go, Hey Jason, teach me how to play the trees. <laughs> He's yeah. Like, yeah. He goes, we met in the middle. Cause it's my, one of my favorite rock bands, classical. And so I played classical for years and then almost exclusively for a minute where I didn't really pick up my electric because I was like in high school trying like competing, like trying to go to state. Right. Right. Yeah. I still play the electric, but then, you know, to learn Zeppelin, one, two, three, house of the holy, you know. Four. Sure, yeah, all of the above, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that that was cool. And but then, that has definitely informed you, because I know you're, you know, you're not just, I mean, I, we've gotten to do so much together where now that you're actually kind of like really informed on funk guitar, which I think is a really interesting to have I, these. I, it comes from my mom, I think. I, I, I wonder where, and I'll say this really quick, not to cut you off, was that, she always listened to killer disco music like she would listen to chic or sure not like patty labelle but like sister sledge all that would always be playing like cheryl lynn she'd always listen to that stuff and i always loved that music i was just it was just so feel good to me and and, 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 all that, and that and that and that style of guitar playing is a totally different animal from classical yeah. or rock it's it's a yeah. whole other thing and it's there's a percussiveness to it the this the knowledge of chords is bizarre. It's almost jazz in, 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 in the chords. Yeah. Especially, yeah, especially that, that Nile Rogers school of playing where it's like, all it sounds like, it sounds like you're just like, you, you're hearing the top three strings. But yeah. It's like, what's happening is so much more crazy. You're like, oh my God, he's doing what, you know? I know. But then I gotta say it was uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, which is, a, you know, connected to Nile, mm -hmm. that I think it was the first time I remember playing like where my right hand was. Right way like more loose and I was just playing chords and uh and I was like man this is like my favorite thing in the world I remember feeling like this is the oh whoops sorry you didn't that's hear right. that. my dad called no, that's all right <laughs> <laughs> uh so playing the, that way it was like I, I felt like uh I've never really tried to put this into words but I just remember feeling like like uh something was coming out but I was like man this feels Besides, obviously, ripping guitar solos, this felt so, oh, my God, this is me. Like, I felt like I wanted right. to do this time. And then I found funk music, and I was like, you know. And it's not just, like, funk for the sake of it. It's like, there's just certain things. Like, even Pink Floyd, you know, like, they always have that super laid back, super groovy stuff going yeah, on in the background absolutely. that feels yeah. so good to play. And same with our band, dude. Like, 
Slash has always been able to throw throw that element, and it's always a part oh, of it, yeah. right? Yeah, you know? yeah. He's he's. I was gonna say because I. When you think about Miles as a guitar player, which is completely overlooked in our band, but Miles is actually yeah. a ja actually a jazz guitar player. Yeah, you can actually throw down on that stuff. And Slash is the rock guitar player. I mean, you're the funk guy. Although mm -hmm. I know Slash, you know, has a lot of cards in his deck. I mean, he does the funk thing. Is you know, you hear it in the Lenny Kravitz song he wrote and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. You know? I remember I played. Uh, I had I was playing my telly and I I decided to play uh, at Soundcheck. I just played this like Rufus and Chaka Khan riff. Mm -hmm. and so cool because like that's what i i love slash for this is that he knows so much more than he would ever you know yeah. let anybody know yeah. i think it's not like he'd be ashamed of it but it's like i played this rip and he goes it's just me and him on stage he goes hey is that shaka khan i was like yeah he's like that's cool like because he, he his mom his dad probably played that all yeah, the time you know? of course yeah yeah i mean but, yeah, he's I, a, but he's also a big lover of the guitar and i think that there's been all kinds of things that have turned him on and you know, yeah. different kind of styles of guitar as well. I mean, we saw Nile Rodgers from Chic in London that time. Remember that? It just kind of like oh, him and Slash, good. like, hey, dude. And we're like, <laughs> it was like, what? That's Nile I'll Rogers. Yeah. Get it, man. And you, you could confirm for everyone that my sleep schedule is never. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how about this? This seemed like, a, it seemed like a dream because I was kind of like, there's no way this is like, what? What are, what are the chances of this happening? So me and right. you, we're all at that hotel in London. And uh, I remember we got in super late or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I remember like, going to sleep and the sun was kind of coming up. And I'm just like. It's that hotel by Hyde Park. I, I forget what yeah, it's called. Yeah, Garden. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And uh, we met Elton John's band there one that's time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That was cool as hell. So I remember I'm sitting there, uh, wake up. I'm tired. I'm just out of my mind. We have a DVD to film that night, remember? That's right. And this is just, what, a year and a half ago? Yeah, not that long ago, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I go in the elevator, and I have backpack, suitcase, guitar case, okay? And I'm standing in the elevator, shades are on, I'm delirious, and <laughs> I have my guitar in my uh, suitcase, and I just, elevator opens, Nile Rodgers. <laughs> just no walk. way. I mean, I'm not even making it up, it was so cinematic. <laughs> Doors open, and he just right past, and I was kind of like, what? <laughs> and he's walking out to towards the front and then one of the guys that works there was like uh mr rogers how was your stay i hope it was great and then Niall was like oh man it's the best it's always great and i'm like oh what a sweetheart this is cool and i'm walking by i'm not gonna go hey dude you know and i yeah, i know high five, yeah. the grounds for that were there considering how close him and slash are but yeah. i was like i just didn't want to i don't know I always feel that way too. Like I'm always that, that kind of, that kind of stuff has happened to us a thousand times. But I'm yeah. always like, uh, I just feel like a dick. guitars. There's a time and a place. Yeah. Felt, but and that would have been it, I think. But what ended up happening was pretty funny because I walk out into the lobby, and you know the bus couldn't fit there, so they gave us. Remember, it was like multiple vans. Yeah. I walk over to you, Brent, and then uh, our manager Jeff Varner was there, and I go, "Do you guys see now, Rogers?" And you're, and what? I was like. <laughs> Alan Rogers is here and then I'm so mad at myself because it's one of those moments where I'm like I'm just gonna go say hi I have to and I wait and then uh Kimo the security guard walks up and sees Niall and he's like bro <laughs> he's like uh I'm about to go get Slash and he was like oh I remember hearing him he goes Slash is my brother he's my he's my favorite yeah I'll, I'll be right here goes and gets Slash walks him down they talk they take a photo and then we all leave and I was just kind of like uh oh he invited him to the show but right. he's like, I have a session at Abbey Road. And it's like, you know what? That's more important. <laughs> Go <Yeah>. ahead. <laughs> That's the coolest thing I ever heard. Nile Rogers has a session at Abbey Road. Wow. Yeah, you yeah. should do that. You should do that. But I mean, you've been very lucky to, uh, not lucky, but I think you've been, you, you found yourself in a position to be on stage with Alice Cooper, uh, yeah. Alex, Alex Lifeson. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it's not by mistake. You know, it's by design that these things have sort of unfolded in the way they unfold. You jam with... Uh, Wolfgang Van Halen. I mean, you're you're you know you're about to be doing jamming here and there with John Five and those kind of guys. It's yeah, you know, it's 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 it, it's weird how like these things sort of like start to unfold and it seems normal. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you have to take a step back once in a while and go like, wow, that's that's a trip. You know what I mean? Like to be you know barely thirty and to have done all these things that you've done is is pretty impressive. It's really, uh, no, and it's something that like. If you told me, and I always think about this in any situation, it's like if you ever said, hey, dude, uh, some guy walks up to you on the street when you're 
like mid rush discography, <laughs> inhaling, yeah. inhaling it. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, "Hey, dude, uh, you're gonna jam uh, at a at Alice Cooper's charity event. They're gonna ask you to play with Alice and Alex Lifeson." And the fact that Alex Lifeson was there was just like, he doesn't do that. He doesn't like go out and no. jam all the time. So that's no, why it was jam. so it was so random. But like that was, I think, one of those moments specifically. And I will say that you know we've jammed with Alice many times, right? You know, he's which is still fun, like right? a, it doesn't matter. Every time it's like, what? Alice Cooper is here? What? You know, it's like it's always cool. Yeah, and yeah. he's uh, he's just the coolest guy. We've all. I mean, the funny part is I've you know I've met the guy as a kid a million times because my dad we go to shows and then there'd be like some kind of connection he and the funny part is like, what a class act he was you always be like uh, always be like hey frank to my dad frankie Marilyn to my grandma like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like how do you you know it's just hilarious what kind of you know memory he has and he you know because he genuinely cares but he does uh, yeah but i remember the the first time we played was the golden god awards where that, that i played you guys already yes. played them. that's true yeah yeah but i remember the email saying um because I'm still in Vegas. Hey guys, uh, this is your hotel. This is the venue. Um, I I don't have your guest list yet, uh, and you can oh. only invite this many people because it's you know not our show. Yeah. Uh, by the and way, we're Alex, yeah. out with you. <laughs> and we're doing schools out by with Alice Cooper, not by Alice Cooper, with Alice Cooper. Yeah. yeah and I'm like, uh, what? And then yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And I think you know at the time our manager Pete was like uh, he knew my dad and the what it meant to him and I was like hey dude I don't know how many tickets you can get but uh my mom my dad my sister have to be there Alice I mean come on so yeah just and, and you and, and you took a solo in that too right you took the F sharp solo in that, in that F sharp solo yeah. yeah exactly yeah that was that was just so cool man what a night and everybody was just I and I met Neil Neil Peart that night that's right <laughs> dude what what a night Lemmy was there uh Billy Gibbons was there everybody was there like what yeah. a what a cool hang and uh I just remember walking back in that, uh, Brent just said this, this is a fun story. It's really short. I go, I'm walking this way to go meet Anthony Stassi. Brent goes, come with me. I'm like, okay, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> and he just said, come with me. He just, I start following him. And you remember we had, I guess, performance, performance, no, sorry, performers had the room yeah. all in the hallway. And then guest speakers had this weird like tent thing that was not like, I don't know. It was like weird, uh, yeah, it's that's a weird setup, that thing, yeah. It was in the back thing. So uh Brent's like, Yeah, follow me. We go there. It's me and I don't I don't know the guy, but he's the dude from DW. Okay. And yeah. The uh thing opens and it's Kyle Gass, Jack Black, Neil, Alex, uh, and I don't think Getty was there, but it was Neil and Alex. No, yeah, because this cause Tenacious D was giving them the rush the lifetime achievement award or something. That's what like it was. That. Yeah, yeah, Alex Lights and Neil Peart. They were just now, where where the hell was I? Dude, I don't know, because I, was, I, I wasn't supposed to be there. I just right. happened to walk by, and, and I, you know, that documentary of, with Rush that just came out, it was about, um, you That's know, right. talking, uh, Neil's like, you know, I, no offense, I just don't meet people, and I just yeah. can't, can't pretend to strangers a long awaited friend, you know. That's like exactly, a, exactly, write that down. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, all right, uh, go in, the curtain opens, and Neil sees me and Brent walk in, and the mutual friend was a DW guy, so I think he, it made him like, it's okay. And I just watched that documentary. I'm looking at Neil and I was not trying to be like, hey, dude, big fan. I was just right. like, uh, hello, Jack, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> legend, 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 legend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I remember he went to, he put his hand out and he shook my hand and he was like, very like, like really nervous. Cause remember, you know, yeah. that, that's where he came, that's him. He was just a nervous kind of guy. And like yeah. he giving a speech. That's right. That's he right. Yeah. And I was like, what's happening? What, you know, how did he get roped into being the guy to accept the award? And he's the guy that hates doing any of that stuff. I know. I think because he's in California, I think, because he was living in California at the time. And it was kind of like, really? I guess, yeah, he lived in California okay. till the end. Yeah. We had other opportunities to hang out with Jack. Jack hung out with us once at, at the Sahara. Remember that? Dude, that was the, that was probably one of the coolest. Jack Black. Ever. Yeah. Dude, that was yeah. amazing. Cause we ended and he's up like, and when we were leaving, I remember just kind of like, okay, we'll see you later, Jack. He's like, bring it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He made a hug, and you're like, I'm hugging Jack Black. It's so weird. Yeah. Dude, he was so, like, that was hilarious. I remember the exact, because, uh, you know, CES, for people that don't know, is the is one of the massive conventions that, you know, absolutely, a yeah. town full of money keeps mm -hmm. it going. And so Marshall 
had Slash come out as a, just That's a right. guest. He didn't jam with them. He just hung out, right? No, he, I think he was just a guest. I think he had something to do at the actual CES thing. Oh, oh he probably, probably yeah. a meet and greet or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So then he's like, yeah, Jack Black, or Tenacious D is playing at this tiny, really cool club called mm-hmm. Sarah Club it, when it was still SLS. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only Sahara, now Sahara again. And That's he's right. Like, yeah, come down. So we're there. We watch Tenacious D and it's incredible. Yeah. It's shit. And I remember we were standing off to the side. It was like an elevated side stage thing. Remember they played like side two of Abbey Road? It was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They play all those songs that you want to hear. And all of a sudden yeah. they do the entire, the entire Beatles medley. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. On right now. So they walk off stage. I'm talking to Brent uh, and Chrissy, his wife, and we're sitting there. And then all of a sudden I get a tap on the shoulder. This is true. This is true. Because like, everyone... <laughs> I was like, what the hell was happening? I think Jack just like put on a little performance. I didn't notice. He was saying hi to everyone in our booth. And he came over, tapped on my shoulder, and I turned around and he looks at me just like this. Just it's <laughs> like, okay. I was like, hello, great set. And then uh that was it. And I was like, well, we could oh. walk away. That was a good night. And then we go to eat together. Remember at that yeah. like, this joint? Yeah. And behind the glass and then uh uh, junior our former security guard disappeared yeah. for like 10 minutes and he comes back with jack and we're like okay <laughs> that's right cool that well, was we, when that was when jack coined the term uh oh, texas hold them <laughs> texas hold them yes <laughs> he said maybe i'll go out and play a round of texas hold them <laughs> not hold them hold them and we were both like oh my god that is the funniest thing i've ever heard just something I would have never even considered. And like, I was so mad at myself for not considering it. Yeah. How, you've been around it your whole life. How are you supposed to know that Texas Hold'em is actually technically te- Texas Hold Them? Yeah. <laughs> so weird. And his, obviously his, uh, his delivery. Is of just, course. It was the just, Jack Black yeah. delivery is, is, you can't even copy it anyway. What, a, what an angel that guy was. Because I remember we were leaving and then a, a handful of people, they walked by and they're like, dude, are you Jack Black? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just so sweet about it. He's just kind of like, he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did photos, everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah I am. Yeah, he was great. so cool. But uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, ultimately, you know, this gig has afforded me so many cool relationships, so many has, yeah. cool experiences that, like, I think that my father and my family got to live through that it made it all mu- that much cooler for me, you know, because it's yeah. just like, you know, I could play uh, play with like uh, I don't know. Michael Monroe is like, this is badass. This yeah, is really yeah, cool. yeah. And yeah. Dad, that's cool. I know who that is. But then you have like those experiences where Michael Monroe is like, yeah. dude, Alice is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Well, that's the thing is 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 your your father is legitimately a massive Alice Cooper fan since he's a kid. Yeah. So the fact that you know his son steps on stage on multiple occasions to play with Alice Cooper, we played with him in like. Uh, Dubai or where, where do we play with that? Yeah, remember that? So yeah. the first one was the award show and then we're getting on a plane to go to Dubai and we run into Jeff Skunk Baxter in the lounge. That's right, that's right. And he's like, hey guys, yeah, sounds good. Uh, you're going to have a gig? Okay, when you go to Russia, yeah, you make sure your laptops are, and he's giving us FBI information. Yeah, like, it was oh, like, oh. <laughs> yeah, super espionage stuff like, okay, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, cool, rock and roll is fun. Hey, Secure your laptops. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a, that's not even an that's not even an exaggeration. He was very sort of like, dude. Yeah, and then we get to uh, or we're, we're in that same lounge, and then Cheryl's like, so uh, okay, yeah, sounds good. Hangs up. So Alice Cooper's gonna play with the guys in Dubai because <laughs> what? He was, <laughs> he was just golfing out there. He wasn't even playing. He was just out there golfing, and then we had a gig. He was literally we're... golfing in Dubai. That's all he was I, doing. I, I think I don't that's know. Hilarious. Chef, Chef Gordon, they were all hanging. That's right. Chef was there. Yeah, yeah amazing but it's awesome that you know and then you know it, it took a minute for to get you to play on a record because the dynamic in that in our band was so disjointed in, in a way because we'd yeah. made we'd made records one way and miles played guitar on apocalyptic apocalyptic and i think he fire. i think he genuinely i remember driving to the studio with him during apocalyptic and he'd be like uh, uh, you know he's still writing lyrics he was kind of like i don't know how i'm gonna do this man and i'm like and i go well, I don't know, you know, it's sort of like, see, he was playing all the secondary guitar parts and yeah. then still writing lyrics and then singing them. So he was super overwhelmed by the entire experience. So the next time it happened, it was all Slash. Even though you'd been on the road with us, it was kind of like, okay, well, whatever. I know and that then, was weird in hindsight. Well, sorry, not, not in hindsight. I know it was weird at the time. And I remember getting a phone call because it was a very like, oh, okay. Like, 
I don't know. I felt like I got thrown into such a crazy whirlwind of, of new experiences. And, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't take it personally. And then I, you know, there's a little part of me that was like, Oh, okay. That's cool. Cause like, yeah, it you know, sucks. It's a, the consolation oh, prize of like, yeah, well, you're going to get to tour the album, which I mean, you know, is still awesome. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, and it's weird. Uh, I think the only weird part is like hearing demos and you're like, you're like of your band. <laughs> it, 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 it's definitely strange and it, and it didn't feel right i know that so but you know by the time we did living the dream you know uh it just made sense and in reality it, it's weird because people are like what's your favorite album of those three albums or two albums i guess technically no yeah. three apocalyptic love world on fire and living the dream are all the conspirators records anyway right. and, and in a weird way the first slash solo album is part of our you know back yeah. in cali starlight all it's those weird that we didn't play on that like yeah. it, it feels people, like we did, right? People kind of assume we did in a lot of ways, but we're not on that. But uh, I know. Um, uh, can you sign this album? But not you, not you, not you, because you didn't play. <laughs> yeah. Josh Green or Chris Cheney or uh, you know, it's exactly. like, oh, hey, it's fine. All right. Dave Grohl, Duff McKagan, all those oh, guys. Okay. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne. Yes, yeah. I know I'm not those people. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not those people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I ended up. Uh, we toured World on Fire. I mean, Slash called me personally. He's like, hey man, because. There was discussion one on one. I remember like little little things here and there during the Apocalyptic Love tour, where he's like, "Yeah, you can play this on that album. That would be cool." Because we were just I remember him saying that, and and that was the very first time that I had ever heard anything of it. So I never expected anything about World on Fire. And then he said that, so I was like, "Okay, that's cool." And then when it came down to it, he personally called me and he's like, "Hey, dude, I think I'm just gonna do all the guitars on it." Uh, so and it was kind of like all right you know what that's fine and then in hindsight now i really don't think i mean i'm sure it would have been fine but of I course like, yeah i feel like i walked into living the in, living the dream in a as a completely different more schooled person like just in general and yeah how to approach it with with this group and with this band and we knew each other better i don't know it would have been fine i just think it, that this like, it definitely yeah. by that point although i still felt there was one album late it definitely <laughs> felt like it just feels more solid okay, so right. whenever, whenever we talk about like what i was saying before about what's your favorite it's like uh in many ways i think living the dream has to be because it's the most realized and i think the most the most I like that. I like banned that. you know what i mean and i think that's one good thing about slash you know is that slash even though he's slash yeah. and you, you can recognize his silhouette you know that that's when you know you're something when you're it's not just not <laughs> yeah. just you know recognizing him it's like literally a a blacked out image of him against a white light. You go, that's Slash, you know what I mean? He, right. um, he loves being in a band and, he, and it, he, he was pretty adamant about it very early on, this, we need a name because it was just called Slash and then eventually Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and then it was like, we need a name and I was like, oh, okay. So to his credit, to, to have given it a name and he likes that sort of like, he doesn't wanna, he doesn't wanna sit at home and make demos and like, here's your parts. He goes, come in and, and, and yeah. And it's so much fun, man. The process, I feel like there wasn't enough. Um, I feel like I, we didn't get to talk about how much, I don't know. like the. I wasn't there while you were playing process. guitar. What'd you say? I wasn't there while you were playing guitar. So it's kind of like, I, I never got to witness. I mean, like just when we're together and we're oh, like, yeah. coming up with stuff together, it's just so fun because like a lot of people ask me like, so did he write your parts? I was like, no, no not at that all. was all me. Except, you know, there were certain things where Slash was like, he had a dedicated thing that he really wanted underneath something and i was like yes yeah. too and then yeah. i played a little different or whatever and he it, it was really an honor though because uh my first time writing with him it was you know obviously you guys have done it before we've done the sound checks a million times mm -hmm. so you like, already knew the shit i already had parts for it but you know when i when i kind of polished at least to to a point whatever i had written at the time at home before i went to the studio i was like i think he'll really like this and then i think this will really make sense and it's like i go in and he's like Oh, that's cool. I'd be like, yeah. all right. And it made me feel like, okay, yeah, that feels good. Cause it's like, you know, it's a, it's a really vulnerable thing in general, mu being a musician and being like, Hey dude, what do you think of course, about this? Yeah. I'm going to sing you a song. What do you yeah. think about this? It's like, you know? Yeah. And really I think, good. but I think that's why, you know, that record in and of itself sort of feels the most complete, even though, you know, in, in, in retrospect, those other two records, I mean, I, I, they're, World on Fire, for whatever reason, is really important for me, and Apocalyptic is important for you know because it was the first one for me to be involved in. Yeah. Um, and Eric was amazing and all that kind of stuff too. But the I think tone it, it, of that first album was very. Uh, I think I have like a weird nostalgia thing. Yeah. 
yeah. connection to it because me like, too yeah just I remember hearing your lie and like the tone like the color I saw when I heard that song yeah. was like dark green it just felt so like, interesting I don't have that color uh, it's pretty lush I feel yeah it. I, there's something yeah. I felt with that album I was like man this is like yeah this, it's just this is something special you know it's solid for sure. So, but I mean, so what do you, what do you, uh, it, it, I'm, in wrapping it up, it almost feels like, so what do you got coming up next? But I know it's kind of like the same as everybody. It's kind of like, well, waiting for quarantine to end and then like maybe go play some music somewhere. Yeah. But you do have a show, you do have a show coming up. Can you talk about that? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I can. I mean, I can talk about it. It's not, you like, can talk in arbitrary, in arbitrary. arbitrary. Yeah. yeah. I'm, it's so weird because I've been rehearsing and, um, I mean, it's uh so i play with frankie perez uh in he's town. a good friend of ours yeah frankie yeah perez, yeah he's yeah. uh he's the coolest guy man he's a monster he's singer. played with he almost sang in velvet revolver i mean he's well known in that community i mean mm -hmm. the community i guess yeah. <clears throat> but we do these things like you know and i think uh everyone does this but no one really talks about it but it's like calling it a corporate gig i yeah. feel like it sound more grandiose but it's like yeah. you know a private gig we're, we're doing and it's it's funny because everyone accepts it we're like yeah hell yeah it's fine i mean we could play a show we'll be fine and all of a sudden the corona numbers in the states are just <laughs> oh i know i know <laughs> yeah. like all right we'll be careful but uh it's it was it's so fun because i've been rehearsing with a full band and horns and shit like that and you're just like man it's like uh i'm back home like you feel yeah. like this is this is where i live yeah and, and uh and to think we're gonna go play a live show and and people are going to see a live show in this current situation. It's just, I haven't played in, I mean, this is the longest I've been off stage in my life. I think a lot of my your entire life. Yeah. My musician friends all say that. It's like, this is the longest I've been off. Even when your eye went out. Yeah, no, I was were you uh, gone this long from music or like probably six weeks, you know, at most. Yeah. Yeah. So look at this. It's crazy. Which is a friggin' lifetime, but yeah. So the, um, uh, yeah. So is John five playing on that one as well? Uh, potentially. So it's like, okay in the past we've had it to where like you know he's shown up or like it's it's hilarious because it's just such a good time because you're usually playing you are playing covers the whole time right and it's like playing panama with mark mcgrath <laughs> he's <laughs> the nicest guy in the world they're playing yeah. like a lot of love sebastian bach gets up on stage there you go uh, matt chamberlain most legendary session drummer like just, absolutely just he's so up there in the josh freese kind of yeah. realm yeah yeah, and Chris Cheney, that, that whole world, you know, Chris Cheney is an absolute, you know, studio legend, but then also he wrote all of, uh, he got you know, writing credit for all of, like, Jagged Little Pill, Alanis Morissette. Yeah, I mean, he's, and, he's, know, he's done, like, great, great things. You know? Yeah, plays and, with, currently with Jane's Addiction and has yeah, been for years. For right? a long time, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, it feels weird signing off when we're probably going to be like texting each other in about a half an hour about something <laughs> stupid. But I, talk, I talked to Zach Throne the other day and I was just kind of like, well, I, I guess I'll see you, but I'll, I'll text you in 10 minutes with some stupid <laughs> Simpsons quote or whatever. Uh, but with you yeah. and me, it's, 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 it, it, we've always said this because between myself, you, and maybe my kids, every crazy thing that comes up that just sounds like no one's going to laugh at this. <laughs> yeah. It's always the same group of people. Yeah. That, like, yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> a very limited amount of people who, who go, that's funny. You know? There's something to be said about finding someone who kind of shows you that they could be welcomed into that world. Like right. A handful of people that understand yeah. the absurdist. Absurdist is, is the word. Yeah. I think that's, that's the nice word. I was just saying ridiculous, I think, but, um, but, uh, you know, that's the thing is we like to laugh and we just, we do it all the time. And I think that's, you know, been the greatest, the greatest pleasure of having you around, sir. Agreed. Yeah. Those tours have been, they would be, yeah. uh, if there weren't laughter and me, you friend happy, then, <laughs> <laughs> then I don't know what to happen. Uh, yeah, me, yeah. <laughs> me happy. Okay. Well, <laughs> I will, uh, I'll text you in about a half an hour with some sort of silly reference, but uh, thank you so much for coming and hanging out, because I... Uh, Thanks, Brent. I'll, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah, hey, I'm fr sorry. hey, Fred, all the best. Great, hey. Brent. Thanks, Frank always, yeah. Frank always calls me Brent. It's the funny thing. Okay, love you. Love you, <laughs> Take care.